Bruh. Try Redundance and Mongols. Okay, that may be a little bit tricky, but we'll, we'll find a way to make it work. Um, so, hello YouTube, in case this gets there. This is my first game of the stream, so if I'm quiet, which I was quiet for like the past couple of videos, because there's no one in chat yet, they're just coming in, here they are. Um, I'm not try harding, but I see comments that think that I'm try harding in the first minutes because I'm not talking. I'm not going to be talking to myself, but you know what, for YouTube, in case this gets there, I will. So now I look like a, people are coming to the stream and they're like, this crazy guy's just talking to himself, literally no one's here. Um, but that's what I have to do, so if this gets to YouTube, now you guys know the sacrifices that go on the daily for you guys. But anyway, hello people coming in, what's up stream chatters? Alright, hello the shadow, yeah all is good man, can't complain, what's up bro? <laughs> Here, not try harding, that would be a new, yeah, yeah definitely. So we're trying the new Bur Burgundians, actually. We're, we're try harding with the new ones. Uh, so what's up, everyone? Uh, we're going to be try harding with the new Burgundians here, and they, they got a nice buff. In my opinion, the Civ is actually quite dangerous now. And the reason I say this is because I felt like they had a pretty decent kit beforehand. Um, they're not the most well-rounded Civ ever, but uh, they have some nice options that they can go for, and they got, like, uh, two or three buffs that happened, basically. Uh, their eco upgrades are now half price in terms of food price. And they also get the, the vineyards, the unique tech there for vineyards is actually, um, it's giving you half your food into gold directly. So it's actually a really big power play. Plus they got like their, the relics give you a bit more food. That's just kind of a small thing, but it does help. Um, so yeah, overall I would say the Civ is, uh, is quite dangerous now. Um, and, and how I would play it is as follows. So you want to basically lure deer. Um, and this is going to be a, a kind of an, uh, an advanced build order. Um, not really build order. I'm, I'm going to make a build order of this for May, actually. But this is going to be an advanced kind of uh, setup that you can do. Which is, instead of queuing this, you want to get early bid axe. And you want to lure deer to get a little bit of extra food. Because obviously you're getting, you're spending an extra 50 food on the, on the you know, bid axe upgrade. So you want to lure deer to compensate and to get a little bit faster food generation. Because obviously deer collects faster than the sheep. Um, so that's my opinion, you lure a couple uh, deers in there, and then instead of going to your regular boar and mill timing, sorry, mill timing, because you have less wood because you spent 50, we're going to make a house and now go get the boar at 13 pop, so uh, you have a couple more that go down on the food basically, and that's once again just to compensate for that extra 50 food. This, is, this might not be exactly how I do the build order by the way, I might do it a little bit differently, I'm going to go get that boar on top. I might do it a little bit differently, and then this guy could just go to the berries. So you go to berries basically one one pop later. That's the whole idea, um, and the and the boar one pop later as well. Uh, this might not be the exact builder that I release in May. Um, I might tweak it a little bit, but this is the general idea that I'm going to propose to you guys. So basically, um, you know, lure a couple deer, get in a little bit more f people on food, and then sneak in that that wood upgrade nice and early. And I know it's not the most efficient because you only have three on um, on uh, on wood right now. But my reasoning is, if you spend those resources early, you're gonna spend them later anyways. So if you can find a way to spend them early without slowing you down too much, because it's only 100 resources, 50 food, 50, uh, 50 wood, um, then you just get a little bit of extra value off it, and it's an upgrade you want to get uh, you know, later anyways. So how will this affect your Stark Age? You can't really up 20 pop because you're spending some resources, but what you could do is you can up 20, um, 21 pop, and you'll be totally fine. And I'm pretty sure the 50 wood you spend on the, on the upgrade completely reimburses you. Uh, like you get completely reimbursed by the time you hit Feudal Age, even if you just have like the three on wood. Um, so uh, it's it's actually I think the Civ is actually pretty dangerous now. Um, not not maybe not like the best Civ all of a sudden, but I think it has some potential uh, for some sweet plays. I'm playing against Doubt here. And he's playing against the Mongols. Um, so I think going for a Scout Rush opening makes some sense for me here. Uh, just to match the Mongol Scouts if he goes for that, and then later we can transition to something else, uh, depending on the situation. Probably some sort of skirms or crossbows to play in Castlage, just to not die to Mangadai. We don't need to lame him. 
Okay, so we're gonna go 21 pop, and that's just gonna allow us to wall a bit more. The thing is, I have a really bad map in terms of wood, actually, so that's just one thing I have to keep in mind. It's actually good to fight in Dark Age, because he will have faster Feudal Age, so... If you want to trade, I'm, I don't mind. He realized it was a mistake, and he went back. Alright. Yeah, so now I'm actually in a pickle, because I don't have a really good wood line. But that's not like a sieve thing, obviously, that's just a map thing. Uh, I could wall this and then use this wood line up here, but it's just so far away. I'm gonna scout in the back, maybe there's a wood back here. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, on the way up, you wanna get horse collar now. Don't get horse collar in Dark Age, you don't seed any farms anyway. Just pick it up on the way up if you're planning to seed farms in Feudal Age, which in this case I most definitely am. I am planning to get some, some sort of stable going as well. Um, I might stick on one lumber camp here. This is not something I'd want to do normally. Normally, I definitely want two lumber camps. But I honestly just don't have the... Uh, I don't have the wood. For, like, I don't have the literal, literal wood <laughs> in my map to justify two camps. Because where am I going to place the second one? Here? It's not, there's not enough wood there. So I might just stick on the one. Which is awkward, but I think that's the kind of decision you have to make sometimes. He's up faster. Could be men at arms, but I think that's actually going to be scouts from him. It's pretty standard. Uh, thing to do with mongols. There's a wood back there. It's so small though. What about this one? Uh, even this one's very far and he found me. So what we're gonna do is run And you want to hit and run to buy yourself as much time as possible And don't let him hit you for free. Ah, uh, there's a wall there. Unfortunate. Okay Well, this is actually a terrible map here. So this has been quite bad so far and and normally I'd, I'd recommend you get bowsaw in feudal age but I don't know if I want to do that now. I'm still going to get it, because I think it's good. It's pretty cheap, all things considered. But I just worry that I don't have I don't have enough wood gatherers to make that pay off on one lumber camp, but we'll see. Um, the thing I want to talk about is, generally speaking, you want to have 9 on wood only, because you have the wood, the wood upgrade. So you can, only, you can only do 9 on wood and get away with it. Or you can do 10 on wood if you want to have a little bit of extra wood. At this point, I'm going to send one villager and make a spearman up top here, because I want to get this wall down. Um, because that's gonna really help with the situation here. So I'm gonna get a couple spearmen. A, four, uh, A up here, yeah. And then B down here as well, and then I'll continue walling up here. And you don't want to get the second farm upgrade, I don't think it's worth it. Um, I think that's too, I think that's too expensive for Feudal Age. However, I want to say, that's at top level. At lower levels, I'm pretty sure you can get away with it just fine. Um, especially if you're floating resources or if you have a habit of floating resources, just pick it up early. It's better to pick it up than to float res. So now I'll just defend here. Since he's Mongols, he ups faster. Alright, uh, we'll kill his scouts. I want to see what he's up to now, so I might actually send up uh, kind of a pl platoon of three scouts to attack him. And yeah, he's doing archers. So I had a feeling this is a possibility as well. I didn't want to discount that. Uh, so now I have to just counterattack him basically. And the hard part here is that I'm going to get pushed off berries very soon. Uh, so I'm just trying to run past them here. I'm gonna run these guys to, to the top, and I'll be I'll be okay actually, but it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be a little bit weird. We have to get, go for a range now as fast as possible. So we'll get a range right here, and then we're gonna try to use our mobility of scouts to do some damage. So it's gonna be a very intense game now, and I've made two spearmen for absolutely nothing now. Yeah, I had a feeling this was a possibility on his end though. And it looks like he is fully walled, so our mobility won't even, yeah, won't even bring us anything here. So this is kind of a bad situation, um, but it's not terrible if we don't take damage here. Like if, if we don't take damage, it's fine. Alright, now I'm going to probably need a blacksmith. Yeah, here is ideal. Uh, although I don't think I'm going to get the ideal. I'm just going to do it here, just to get it down fast. And honestly, the danger here is he sits behind my woodline. And he idles everything, so let's get back on the berries now. Yeah, this is the danger. I'm calling all the shots before they happen. I have some skirmishes to defend here, just whether it's going to be enough or not. So I don't have fletching now, so you can still abuse the range a little bit. Okay, and, and he will lose, like, he's harassing me a little bit here, but he will lose those archers, all of those archers, uh, eventually. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, 
I'm gonna just send the Spearman to Scouts. Yeah, the biggest mistake I made so far is making two blind Spearmen. I kind of just assumed he was going Scouts. But at the same time, that's kind of what you what you face with Mongols as well, oftentimes. Just because they have depth to fuel these fastest, so you can't really afford just scouting into them. Okay, not the worst cleanup ever. Now we're gonna get the gold. Fix my situation here. Okay, are you guys serious? And she's going all the way around for some reason, so I'm gonna hopefully get her to the gold. Yeah, so this has been pretty interesting so far. Um, this is fine for me right now, because I want to be able to play skirmishes in Castle Age. That's something I'm actually interested in doing anyway, so... Uh, I'm gonna just continue setting up my map, trying to full house wall that side. Just so in Castle Age I can just worry about this top side and expand. I have back gold, so I don't have to worry about that uh, too much. You ideally want to get Wheelbarrow here, in, in Feudal Age, ideally, because it's cheaper. I just don't know if I can justify it at the moment. Because um, it was a very hectic game. I should have gotten it a little bit earlier. So I don't know if I can justify it now. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to even make three villagers. I think I'm going to make just two more. And wheelbarrow is like the same time as uh, three villagers. So just hello to everyone who's coming in from the Twitch channel now. Uh, I'll put the alerts on. I'm not sure why they're off. Scamming some subscriptions here. Now, question is, do I want to make a second range or not? Now, I have to just see, is he doing, and we'll get this upgrade as well in the meantime. Is he doing cow archers? Sta okay, stable transition. Now I have to ask ourselves, is he doing cow archers or is he doing um, knights or stable units? I don't know, and I want to be fully walled beforehand. Oh, that's bad for him. He just showed me that. And I'll go up. Okay, he's got bloodlines and attack. So we can go back here. So what I can do is actually invest into a lot of um, a lot of cavalier here. I'm gonna go. I might even go one TC cavalier. And so the how you do this is you wanna get a lot of your upgrades here. You can even get the gold mining upgrade because it's just so cheap. Uh, and we can go one TC. So if you go one TC, you get all of your eco upgrades. And you're gonna go three stable and oh, right away cavalier. So right away we go for the cavalier. He's actually making a couple step lines just because they did get they did become a little bit cheaper. That's incredibly weak, so if I can get my full walls down in time, I'll be more than fine here. I'll use my scouts to scout around, I'll use my skirmishers to buy, me some, buy myself some time. So what I'll do is I'll go 1 TC here, and get all the eco upgrades, and then you're going to get a fast cavalier here. And we'll, we'll be fine here, perfect. And the danger is that he breaks in here, but we'll just house wall behind it. <coughs> I'll just run to the corner with these guys. Hopefully there's no hole. If there's a hole, I just have to panic and react to it. But I think we'll be okay, actually. Maybe the gate is a little bit dangerous here. I'm not sure how the step lances can hit over walls, like how that affects it. I'll just do a gate behind. Uh, these guys are quite dangerous, actually. we hit the... Uh, hit the, just the scouts. I think we'll be okay, actually. And we are going to go 1TC. Go and open and repair. Yeah, do I repair fast enough? Yeah, we're fine. And you want to get Cavalier upgrade instantly as well. This is breaking incredibly fast though. Alright, that should be good. Yeah, that should be good. Houses are broken, man. Yeah, so now we're going to go 1 TC and we're going to continue to seed farms and get onto gold basically. And he should die to Cavalier here. Like, he, he really should die to Cavalier. Just continue behind this. So basically, the plan is to go Cavalier, 1TC, and then get all the relics. Because they buff the relics, they give you a bit more food now. So we generate gold and food at the same rate. He's going all in Step Lancers, but I'm pretty sure this is just going to fall flat soon. We shall see. Ten months ahead of go. Uh, ideally a market could be nice. Actually a wheelbarrow is probably the best thing to get here. And as soon as I get Cavalier, I think I'll be able to fight. Maybe not as soon as I get Cavalier, but Cavalier and a little bit more mass for sure would be good. <laughs> and it seems like I have to constantly build the new ones behind. He's all in Step Lancers here, so it's going to be interesting actually. And he's going to get in here now. Huh? 
I don't want to take a bad fight. So I'm gonna wait to mass as much as as much of these cavaliers as possible, because it's gonna come down to one fight. But no, I, I there's no way I lose this. I have cavalier, bro. There's no way I lose this fight. Yeah, he he can't take it. He can't take it. It's cavalier with step lunges, right? It's, should be easy win for me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's cavalier with step lunges at the end of the day, so. I mean, Step Lances might be kind of cool units, but. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not gonna really work out for him. He's just gonna get cleared, cleared up. And now, what I wanna do ideally is not chase too much. Is just go right across the map. So our 1 TC Cavalier play obviously paid off. He's gonna try and raid. I mean, he'll get 1 2 villagers, but not a huge deal ever. Um, I don't wanna let him just free pass into it, though. So I wanna get ideally a gate here. Because I don't want to let him free pass. Okay. So every step lancer I saw, I just chased him with one cavalier. And yeah, again, as usual, he'll get some. He'll get some value out of it, but should just be able to break in here. Oh, that's a hole, and that's going to be pretty GG here. So as you can see, my economy is actually great behind this. Like, it's a really, really good economy. Because I have all the eco upgrades, including uh, the gold one as well. So what ends up happening is you have a really good unit in the Cavalier and Castle Age. And then I have a really good economy behind it. And now I'll pick up the Relics, which will give me food and gold trickle. So this 1TC Burgundian play is very strong. And this is not the only way to play them as well. Like, I can easily, just as easily, have boomed if this was a boom game. And then you can go for the fast paladin that is also really strong. Um, however, the save I will say, yeah, we can get some eco now because he's because he has some eco as well, so we can get some ourselves. I will say um, that, uh, that it's a little bit kind of like one trick sieve. I think their unique unit's not that good right now. I think you play them Burgundian, paladin. Yeah, I'm gonna do a May build order Burgundians actually because this is really really good in my opinion at the moment. Although it's a bit hard to play. Um, not hard to play, but you know you gotta know what you're doing. I would say, because it's different than regular sips. So now I have the cavalier pressure. I'm gonna get the relics, which gives me food trickle and gold trickle, which is it's a small bonus. It's not bad, um, and they obviously help for late game. And then behind this, I'm gonna boom. And if we get the imperial age, I'm gonna have paladin very fast. So right away, that's incredibly strong. All right, he's got the monk now, so I can't really be forcing too hard. Um, let's get another TC back here now. I guess on the gold. I'm gonna do it on the wood though. I want more wood. But like now I've got so much eco upgrades, including the second gold upgrade. Um, that my eco is just really good, honestly. We can get that one real, real quick, and then we can make our way to the top one. And then this guy can make his way to this one. So we have four relics, real quick. And now we can actually try and break the house again. If you can rinse one unit, it's fine. I have so many. But I, I want to be putting the pressure here. <clears throat> yeah, if you convert one unit, it's fine. What's one cavalier compared to uh, this amount of pressure I'm getting? It's fine. And we can fight camels. He doesn't have a lot of upgrades on those guys, so I'm gonna just go in here. I gotta be careful because he's getting some up. He's, he's getting some conversion, so I don't know if this is actually gonna be a good fight, but it's gonna be pretty decent with, uh, especially with the cavalier coming from behind. He actually opened. Yeah, that, that's pretty decent. That's, he might even call the GG here. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't, just because he, he might think I'm on one TC, but I'm not. <laughs> I Mayuka's mean, just so good. It's it's just so clean. Like I I actually kind of like the sieve now, honestly. And the thing is, even beforehand, I said like they were bad, but they, they, their concept wasn't terrible. Like I, I still think their concept was pretty decent. Um, and now I just felt like they got like some some eco savings. They save resources, which is the most important bonus in Age of Empires. And now they're actually pretty good. So I would say be careful of the sieve. And also, if you like playing, if you like playing some unique style 
Uh, civilization, this is kind of a good one to pick up. Now I have the idea to... Ooh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now I have the idea to either go, like, all in Castle Age to continue with Cavalier or just try to greet the Imperial Age. I think I'm just going to go Imp, Imp right now because he's taking so much damage. He's going to have to recover from that. And he doesn't really have units. He has Mugs and Camels. Like, even if he attacks me with all of those combined, he's not going to do anything. So that's one way you could think about this game right now. I'll look for the last Relic, although I wouldn't be surprised if he took it. Like, if it's in his... His base. I already have four, which is giving me a food trickle and a gold trickle. Like that's quite strong. I have three in the fourth one coming out. Yeah, that's quite strong, honestly. Um, and that's not a bad bonus at all. So once you get all the, you know, the upgrades that you need, it's gonna be pretty smooth sailing here. Like Paladin should be able to end the game, is what I'm saying. That one camel is not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna convert it to delete it. Yeah. So. Once you get the Paladin, like, I don't really see myself losing a game like this, honestly. Um, four stable. I thought I had the range patched. And like, four Relics, full Paladin. Even versus Mongols that have potential of Megadai, he's not going to get that. He's just going to get completely destroyed uh, early Imp. And have all the equip grades. So one thing I want to comment on real quick, just as we're in this, uh, you know, in this video. This is probably going to go to YouTube. I would not get these upgrades in Castage. This only gives you 10% extra bit axe and bowsaw give you 20%. So I think it's probably, and this is more expensive. So I think this is probably the worst upgrade to get. And then also the farm upgrade, it gives you only 175 food extra. It doesn't let you collect faster and it's too expensive for early castle uh, or even late castle. That's something you get in post stimp, okay? Even if you get a discount, you get it after you have all the upgrades on your military and you have extra resources, you get those. Or, the other or, is if you're floating resources, then you pick it up, okay? But if you're a competitive player out there, and you want to try and learn how to play, like, you know, you're 1800, you want to try and get to the 2k level, these upgrades are not good in Castle Age. They just don't give you enough value. Um, and I'm pretty sure most experts would agree, but uh, if there's someone, you know, some experts out there that disagree, obviously, feel free to let me know. Uh, I don't know how many of those guys watch my YouTube videos, though. Okay... Town watch is decent here, and like this is perfect. And honestly, at this point, you can do whatever you want. So you can get like a fourth town center. You can just double down on more stables. Just how this game has progressed, I don't think I'm gonna need more eco than than what I already have right now. And I don't really see a place for fourth TC. Like maybe actually right here could be pretty decent. Um, but uh, yeah, it's whether I need it or not, eh, it's up for debate, I guess. I think I'm okay with the three. And you just want to instantly get Paladin. It's a cheap upgrade. It, it comes in instantly. Paladin plus four, and the game will completely be over soon. He's gonna try and get the Megadai, but always get plus four before the attack as well. Armor is vastly more important, unless you're playing against strictly melee units, but if you're gonna be raiding or playing against any range units, plus four is definitely the healthier option. And now what I'm gonna do is get a castle. I think I can get up here. Up here can be really good, but also right here to start is decent as well. Yeah, he's got there, so I'm fine with that. Let him get that. I'm gonna just kill the castle, actually. <laughs> Because uh, I have I have Paladin, like, what what can he do? I'm going to have Paladin very soon. It's Cavalier right now. The Civ is actually just very strong. And yeah, the Cavalier don't have Bloodlines, but it's still like a Lithuanian Knight with two Relics. So it's still a very strong unit. And then as soon as Paladin comes in, that, that unit's insane. Even without Bloodlines, it still has 160 HP with full Imperial Age upgrades. So it's still an amazing, amazing unit. And honestly, the Civ can turbo now into late game. I mean, look, now I, didn't, oh, I don't have even a Lumber Camp, by the way. That's pretty embarrassing. Um, let's, let's get another camp. <laughs> like, I need one. And, like, now the, the Civ can easily turbo into this option. And this Civ is also very deadly in team games now. Like, obviously, Britain Frank is going to be, like, your best combo, probably still. But Burgundy in team game might be pretty dangerous. In 2v2s, for example. Uh, and in, in the pocket of a, of a team game. Uh, they have a certain window that only they can reach. No one can get Paladin this fast. No, no Civ can get Paladin while putting this much pressure in Castle Age uh, and on such low eco, so I'm gonna get Paladin now, just completely dive him and he's gonna just die and the thing is I wanna end this by stating you don't tech into Hussar late game you go Paladin and then if you need how with your Skirmisher you could go for that but you don't go Hussar, if you need gold you use the unique tech to get you more gold and you spam Paladin and you kill your opponent now if this gets to late game my save is gonna be weaker than Mongols 100% if this gets to like late end Alright, so you really want to put all your resources into killing your opponent now. There's the GG. 
you can kill them every time if you play correctly in this time window. If you play the, the, mid, the early game, mid game correctly, of course. And I think, I'm not going to say the sieve is overpowered because I don't think it's overpowered. But I think the sieve is now able to accomplish what it was meant to do. I don't think it's overpowered. I don't think it's broken. But I think it's actually a very strong sieve if played correctly. And I think it has a lot of potential. And if you play on the timing windows correctly, you can actually achieve games like this where you have Paladin and your opponent is just getting to Imperial Age or he barely has Arbalest on the field and you already have Paladin. That's pretty insane. Harris says it's broken, go freak out on Aoe Zone. Now, I don't think it's broken, but I think it really enhances, you know, how the game is played. And I think it really kind of changes the player experience from a competitive standpoint. Um, and so it's definitely worth it to get the DLC and pay those $10 to get the Civ now. Um, and also it's, uh, wait, what's the script? It's very healthy for the future of the game and the competitive scene at large. Uh, so just, yeah, just gonna let you guys know. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the DLC part. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna get it, if, you get it if not. But uh, one caution actually, they they suck you in now, and then you buy it, and then they nerf everything again. So it's like, yeah, be careful. Uh, <laughs> be careful with that ten dollars. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Very good game. And he had more villagers. Honestly, I had my TC a little bit in imp, so I could have been at like a hundred. But even if he's got more villagers, the plan is to kill him now anyway, so it's completely fine. So post buff is Burgundians an aggressive sieve more than a boop sieve? I think it's a very aggressive sieve. You have to play on timings. Whatever map that allows you to put pressure on in a like castle and imp. You can't play closed maps, you can't really play water maps with this sieve, but any open map is going to be fine.